It is now time for member statements. The member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. Throughout the pandemic, the people of Ontario have been looking to the Premier to act in their interests. But on issue after issue, the Premier says the right things but does the opposite of what he says. On the long-term care crisis, the Premier said he's going to fix the system and that he would put an iron ring around seniors. But instead, he voted against a public inquiry and is now ramming through not one but two bills that further privatizes senior care and denies justice for families who have lost loved ones. Speaking about frontline and essential workers, the Premier said that it's his job to look out for them. But after two months since the pandemic pay was promised, thousands of frontline workers, heroes as the Premier called them, have yet to receive a single penny. When it comes to small businesses, the Premier warned commercial landlords, saying, don't force my hand. Then the Premier folded and passed such a narrowly focused eviction ban that doesn't help thousands of small businesses stay open. If this is the hand, then no bully is going to be scared hurting the little guy. The Premier issued a moratorium on residential tenant evictions and said, if you can't pay rent, then you don't have to pay rent. But as I speak, the government has a bill that makes mass evictions of tenants who have been unable to pay rent due to COVID inevitable when the Landlord and Tenant Board reopens. The people of Ontario have been getting the short end of the stick again and again. The Premier's words and actions just don't add up. We deserve better. Thank you. Member statements. I recognize the member from Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, almost a month ago, the province of Ontario reopened places of worship to attendance limited to no more than 30 percent building capacity and with physical distancing measures in place to ensure the safety of worshippers. My constituency has received positive feedback from worshippers of all faiths, thankful to be able to return to their places of worship, even in a limited capacity. I'm sure my colleagues in this house can say the same in their respective writings. Faith is such an important source of comfort and courage in the lives of many Ontarians, especially during these unprecedented times. I was honoured to work with the Minister of Labour and his team on consultations that brought together faith leaders from across Ontario to collaborate in the spirit of commitment to safely and responsibly reopen places of worship to the public. I took part in several consultations with faith leaders, and I want to thank my colleagues who took part in consultations with leaders of communities of faith for assisting with this tremendous effort. In particular, I would like to thank the places of worship of all faiths in Mississauga East Cooksville who have stepped up efforts to re reopen safely and responsibly. Madam Speaker, we say a lot today about the new normal, and I agree, life may be different in many ways in the coming weeks and months, but one thing is certain, that we may continue to find strength in our Thank you. Member Statements, I recognize the member from Toronto St. Paul. Good morning, Speaker. Thank you to every musician, author, publisher, independent bookstore owner, poet, actor, dancer, visual artist, arts collective, comedian, and fashion designer in St. Paul's and across Ontario who has shared their craft virtually during COVID-19. You have also donated homemade PPE to those in need. While you have provided us with the invaluable social medicine, the mental sustenance we've all benefited from during this pandemic, your work has gone unpaid, and many of you have gone into great debt. Many of you cobbled several jobs together before COVID-19 to make ends meet, and now those jobs are gone. Our concert venues, theatres, bookstores, festivals, arts and dance studios have shuttered, and many will not reopen. By the way, dancers need space to practice, you know. Like sport athletes who have been able to practice in their facilities since May, dancers like those at our St. Paul's renowned Canada Yoga and Ballet, home to elite athletes, as well as Taji Abdulhalisini's dancers must also practice. Cultural employers struggling to survive will need clear, comprehensive, and timely reopening guidelines from this government and emergency stabilization funds and tax credits, not loans, to cover mounting PPE 
retrofit expenses. Film, TV, live entertainment workers and unions have been advocating for workers' health and safety and economic reform during this storm. And arts educators and students are asking me, what will happen this fall to arts education? We need a doubling of the Ontario Arts Council budget, basic in income, and extended federal wage subsidies during COVID-19, and a direct residential and commercial rent subsidy, along a long list of things that I've mentioned in my Save Arts Culture letter. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. Next, we have the member for Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Mr. Speaker. Friends, this month of July commemorates the first ever official Egyptian Heritage Month. Since it was passed in the House last year, and on that note, happy Egyptian Heritage Month to all Ontarians and those are celebrating. It brings me great joy to have brought this act forward being the first Canadian member of Egyptian origin to be elected and sitting in the parliament. To commemorate all that hard work and accomplishments that Canadian Egyptian shows every day. I want to thank our Premier, our Minister of Finance, and our Minister of Heritage, Sports, Tourism, and Culture Industries for helping to make the Egyptian Heritage Month possible for Canadian Egyptians and Ontarians. Without your support and guidance, this would not have been possible. I want also to take this time to thank all Canadian Egyptians for continuing to be an economic, professional, and cultural contributors to our great province of Ontario. I would like to thank the Egyptian government for the cabinet statement that thanked the Ontario government for recognizing the Canadian Egyptians and the Egyptian Heritage Month, as well as all the ministers who congratulated us. I want to also to thank the Egyptian Canadian Heritage Association for adopting and transport, to, transporting to virtual celebrations and create new and innovative way to all Ontarians to enjoy the Egyptian heritage safely. I thank you for your commitment in creating a program for the full month of July and by finding ways to make this celebration virtual. And have fun for all. Thank you. Member Statements. The Member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to sound the alarm on illegal evictions that are happening right now across Ontario, despite the temporary ban on evictions. Speaker, my office recently heard from Teresa, a tenant in Barrie, uh, who was forced from her home in the midst of a pandemic. After Airbnb being an apartment in January, Teresa entered into a month-to-month -month tenancy with her landlord. In June, despite having a valid tenancy under the Residential Tenancies Act, her landlord had her illegally evicted. There was no eviction order issued, but when the landlord called the Greater Simcoe County Police, they threatened to charge her with trespassing as if she was uh, still an Air Airbnb tenant who had simply overstayed in her unit. Teresa presented evidence to the police, including communications with the landlord, and had her lawyer on the phone at the time. But that day, the police in Barrie acted as judge, jury, and executioner, and Teresa and her husband had only a few hours to pack up their belongings and get out. Teresa pleaded with the landlord and the police to take into consideration her husband's respiratory issues that make him particularly vulnerable to COVID-19 before heartlessly tossing them out on the street. Teresa works from home for a college. She's had her work severely disrupted. She's now living out of a hotel and is dealing with the stress of a court case. And instead of stopping illegal evictions and helping tenants like Teresa stay housed in the midst of a global pandemic, this government is fast-tracking an eviction bill through this House. Speaker, through you to the Premier, where is this Premier's priorities to help families like Teresa? And what do you have to say to Teresa right now, who's been illegally evicted from her home? Thank you. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Guildwood. It's an honour to rise today to recognise the important work that's being done in Tuxedo Court in the Woburn community in my riding of Scarborough Guildwood. Tuxedo Court is home to several densely populated residential buildings 
which are home to a high proportion of residents living below the poverty line. The community includes newcomers, youth, low-income residents, and many resident seniors that are living in isolated buildings. Last year, Last week, sorry, the outreach team at the Global Kingdom Ministries, located just across the street from Tuxedo Court, distributed refurbished desktop computers to 80 families in the building. This donation will help youth access educational resources, recreation, recreation and reduce isolation amongst seniors. Community leaders from the Tuxedo Court community are also partnering with the TTC as part of the agency's commitment to distribute one million masks to Toronto residents. I continue to call on the Minister of Health to provide public health units with additional funding to source and distribute masks, as well as opportunities for people to self-isolate in communities like Woburn so that we can keep people safe. Toronto Public Health COVID-19 data shows that Woburn community continues to be a hotspot. As the province opens up, low-income residents need to have reliable access to masks and places to self-isolate to protect themselves and others. There are many things that people need to keep themselves safe, and we have to respond in a timely manner. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Brampton West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The health and well-being of Ontario's transit passengers and employees is a top priority for the Ontario government. It is also important to recognize that municipal transit agencies across the province are facing significant financial challenges as a result of the COVID-19 outbreak. To ensure the safety of Ontarians, the Ontario government is taking important steps to keep transit riders and operators safe and help in reducing the transmission of COVID-19. Speaker, it is wonderful to see that the Ministry of Transportation is providing 15 million to 110 municipalities across the province to support enhanced cleaning of public transit systems and help stop the spread of COVID-19. Out of this, a funding of over 602,000 has been allocated to the Brampton municipality, which will support our local transit system in Brampton as the province gradually reopens and people return to work. Enhanced municipal transit cleaning funding builds upon the recommendations in the recently released safety guidance for public transit agencies, which support safe and reliable public transit that will get people moving, reduce congestion, and drive economic growth. I would like to put on record my appreciation to the Minister of Transportation and the Premier for making municipal public transit systems safer by helping to reduce the transmission of COVID-19 through such crit critical measures. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements. The member for Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you, Speaker. When Ontario went into pandemic lockdown in mid-March, our packed streets became open roads. And with traffic way down, so were accidents. In Toronto alone, there were 74 percent fewer accidents, meaning insurers were paying out fewer claims and pocketing even more profit than usual. So to ensure drivers were treated fairly, Ontario's NDP called for an immediate 50 percent reduction on auto insurance premiums during the lockdown. Premiums are based on risk, and the risk of accident was way down, whether a driver's car was parked or not. Instead of taking a strong approach to protect drivers, this government gave insurers permission to give out rebates, but did not require them to. This approach relied on the goodwill of the auto insurance industry to share the massive amounts of money they were saving with drivers. And with drivers left to haggle with their insurers, the results have been predictable. A recent survey by insurancehotline.com has revealed that only 30 percent of Ontario's drivers have experienced some form of relief, and what they got was usually next to nothing. But even worse, drivers are telling me that they are getting massive rate increases when they have renewed their policies during this pandemic. Of course, nobody knows what's going on because the government has been hiding this year's auto insurance quarterly rate approvals and letting insurers do whatever they want. It's time that the government admit it. Their oversight of auto insurance during COVID-19 has been a failure. Rather than stand up for Ontario's drivers, this government has taken them for a ride. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you, Speaker. As we all know, last Wednesday, July 1st, was Canada Day. Typically, for our communities, Canada Day is a day of gatherings and festivals to celebrate our great country. However, this year was anything but typical. I was pleased, though, to attend a number of much smaller events in my community in Mississauga Streetsville this Canada Day 
to commemorate the occasion of our nation's 153rd birthday. First, the Streetsville Legion Branch 139 hosted a socially distanced color guard parade and ceremony at the Streetsville Village Square. While nowhere near the scale of our traditional celebrations, the act was a small reminder of years past and the sacrifices that those have made to ensure we have the freedom that we enjoy today. I then had the opportunity to join a local congregation of Dawoodi Bohoras to participate in a virtual flag raising alongside seven other congregations right across Canada. The event was the first of its kind, and the act of raising the Canadian flag at the same time across the country was a symbol of our unity and strength. It was a pleasure to see and hear from various leaders, including a member from Richmond Hill in her community. Following a tour of their beautiful new mosque, I was ventured to the Streetsville Legion to join members on the patio to chat and catch up and let them know we are all available to them. In this time of adversity, it was heartwarming to see our community come together and find new ways to celebrate our country, and I look forward to our next year's celebrations. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements? The member for Mississauga Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Over the past few months, Ontarians have been living in difficult and unprecedented times. When people are experiencing something new and unfamiliar, it can cause stress, anxiety, among other mental health challenges. We know that many Ontarians are still worried about their health and the future of their livelihoods. That is why our government took immediate action to help support those who may be struggling. At Ontario.ca slash coronavirus, Ontarians can now easily find information about the mental health care supports such as Connects.ca or Kids Help Phone available to them. We also know the mental and physical strain that our frontline workers and our first responders are facing. For months, many have been working tirelessly while being forced to make tough decisions every single day. Speaker, I have seen firsthand the impact of COVID-19 on the mental health of our health care heroes. I want them to know that this government has their back whether by providing childcare or online support, such as internet-based cognitive behavioral th therapy, we are here to support them every step of the way. I recently held a teletown hall with the Associate Minister for Mental Health and Addiction Services, as well as some key partners, such as the Canadian Mental Health Association. We heard that the emergency funding of 12 million provided by our government to increase online access to mental health and addiction services has been key in supporting people experiencing anxiety, depression, addictions and other challenges during this pandemic and has provided alternatives to in-person counseling. During these unprecedented, unprecedented times, our priority is to ensure all Ontarians have access to quality services and supports they expect and deserve, because mental health is health. Thank you. I want to compliment the members for their statements this morning, but I would remind all of them, I think, that uh, the statement time should be about 90 seconds, ideally.